Hi, and welcome to Uncle Scott's Pancast, episode 19, sponsored by BakedDeco.com. We'll have a little bit more on that sponsorship later in the Pancast. I want to get started today with a bunch of news and product updates. I'm going to start with some news items from Debouye, some new product launches they've got going on. I'm going to talk a little bit about some Maviel Copper. We're going to talk a little bit about some Kramer Carbon Steel Knives. We've got some poll results, some tips on how to not get screwed if you buy something like this Lodge storage tower on the internet and more. Let's get started. Okay, I want to start off talking about Debouye. Talked to them last week. They got quite a few things going on and I wanted to highlight some of those things here. We're pretty big fans of Debouye. Always gotten really high quality products from them and I've liked just about everything I have bought from Debouye. So what they have got going on for the fall selling season is they're launching some new pans in sets. Um, there's a new Alchemy line. It's a three-ply stainless line. There's a new Affinity line. It's a five-ply stainless line. And then there's the almost impronounceable Inocuiva. line of copper pans for those who really want to empty their wallets. Okay, let's start out with the Alchemy lines. These are going to be three-ply stainless with brushed exteriors. Uh, the cooking surface is going to be 1810 stainless. The core is going to be aluminum. And notably here, that core goes up the sides of the pan. It's not just a disc on the bottom. It goes all the way up the sides. That should be good for helping with heat distribution and control. And then, of course, you got a stainless exterior. Notably here, you can use it on any cooking surface, including induction. It can also go in the oven, so that's nice. It can also go in the dishwasher. I like that. Now, it looks like it has a new handle. I have not used a handle like this on a Debouye pan. Stainless steel, three rivets. The interiors of the pans also have quantity measurements in there in both liters and quarts, so that's kind of nice. And there's a big variety of shapes and sizes. Some have lids, some are without. And it's also available in sets. We'll get to the sets here in just a minute. 100% made in France. I really do like that. And if you read some of the Bouillet's marketing materials, you'll see that they have a big commitment to the environment, to their manufacturing processes. They've won all kinds of awards. And I note, you never see anything like that on pans made in Asia. Just saying. I really do like the French, 100% French made cookware. Now let's move one step up the food chain to the Affinity line. Here you get a five-ply pan, also stainless, promoted as a luxury line of pans. For those who don't understand, that means get out your wallets. Differences here are the five-ply are going to have a polished exterior. They're also going to have a little bit fancier handle, this cast stainless handle, which is the same one, I believe, that appeared on these Mineral B Pros last year. That's what it looks like to me. And then if you kind of move up to the top of the food chain, you've got the almost impronounceable Inocuiva. Inocuiva. Inocuiva line of pans. Those are going to be copper with a stainless steel lined interior for those who really, really want to empty their wallets. Now, some of these are going to be available in sets for the first time. They should launch somewhere around September 13th, is what they told me. A little bit of info on pricing. Uh, Alchemy pans are going to range from $150 to roughly $225. $640 more or less for a six-piece set. Moving up to the Affinity line, a six-piece set there. It's going to be about $800. And at the top of the range, the five-piece copper is going to be roughly $1,500. $1,500. Holy cow. Now, the most important thing to remember here is if you're going to buy a big, fancy set of copper cookware, make absolutely certain you use one of my affiliate shopping links. Okay, now let's talk Kramer, carbon steel knives. We didn't do a full review, but we did kind of a little feature on this knife uh, about a year ago. So I've been using it almost a year, not quite. This is a 10-inch Kramer carbon steel chef's knife. 
And I have mixed feelings about it actually. But I found out that they're not going to be making these anymore. This line is going to be discontinued. And it's going to be replaced with what they're calling the Carbon 2.0 lineup. Should launch sometime early September. I've seen a few for sale, but the full lineup is not out yet. And this new Carbon 2.0 lineup is going to have a different handle. Now just with my knife, and I've read on the internet some other people have the same complaints that I do. This is a, some sort of African natural wood handle. And as a natural material, there's a lot of moisture in the kitchens. There's different humidity. It gets washed. It gets dried. These things may tend to swell and change shape just a little bit. And I notice when I run my finger over this handle, I can kind of feel the rivets. And it's more pronounced on some than others. This one's very smooth. But here I can kind of feel the edge of that rivet. What's odd about that, and what I don't like about that, is that I've got other cheaper knives with man-made handles and the rivets are smooth. I've had these things for years, even this cheap KitchenAid. No problems with the rivets or the handle. But on a $400 knife, I get problems with the rivets. So I don't like that. And what I think they're doing for the Carbon 2.0s is keeping the carbon steel blade, but just swapping out the material of the handle. Should mitigate any of the handle problems they had with the natural wood material. They're going to use a man-made product called Micarta, perhaps Micarta. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it. But this wood, it's kind of nice, kind of elegant on a high-end knife, but it's not uniform, it's not consistent, so hopefully the man-made product will alleviate any of these rivet ridge concerns. Now let's talk a little bit about our sponsor, Baked Deco. I ordered some stuff from them the other day. They have all kinds of great kitchen gear, lots of specialty items that are a little bit difficult to find other places. Some of the things I ordered were these precision tongs. You know, you got your big tongs for things like a ribeye, big steak. These are a little bit more precise. I like those. Also very effective for annoying your wife in the kitchen. Yeah. I got some smaller precision tongs, even more precise. I got these Shun or Shun shears. They've been difficult to find on other sites. Big Deco had them in, but they have all kinds of little specialty items like this, all kinds of great cooking gear. Now, if you place an order that's $50 or more, you get free shipping. If you place an order that's $75 or higher and use the discount code SCOTT10 at checkout, you get 10 bucks off your order. Sounding pretty good to me. Definitely check them out at bakedeco.com. Now let's talk a little bit about Mavi L Copper Cookware. If anyone remembers, we reviewed some. It's probably been a year or so ago. I've really enjoyed my Mavi L Copper. And I got the Copper in what's called the 250 series. If you look at Mavi L Copper product numbers, there will always be a three digit number. It would be something like M250C. So for example, this was an M250C. The letter C refers to the cast iron handle, or at least cast iron plated handle. The M stands for Maviel, and the 250 stands for 2.5 millimeters. So this is a 2.5 millimeter thick pan. That was the thickest they made. It's kind of at the top end of their lineup. They also made a 150 series. That refers to 1.5 millimeter thick copper. They've now come out with what's called a 200 series. So that 200 series is going to be kind of somewhere in the middle two millimeters thick. Now it's going to be a step up from the 1.5. It's going to be a step down, in my opinion, from the 2.5. So it's kind of in the middle. Now I've heard, but I've not been able to confirm this, that they're going to quit making these 250s. And to me, that'll be a little bit disappointing, but I do understand we're in a period of hyperinflation. Prices are going up, input costs are going up, and it may just be that you can make the best pan in the whole world, not going to do anybody any good if they can't afford to buy it. So I do understand making lower price series of cookware, but man, I hope these 250s still stick around. Just for... Okay, now let's do a little segment called How to Not Get Screwed. So I put up a review of this Lodge Cookware Storage Tower last week, and I gave it a three-quarters thumbs up, which is a pretty decent review. 
But after I put that review up, I started getting some feedback and people were saying, well, these things are sold out. And somebody else said, well, they've raised the prices on them. So that seemed a little bit odd. So I started doing a few channel checks. They were sold out on Lodge.com. I had gotten mine on Amazon. Ships by and sold by Amazon. It was right around $100. So these prices fluctuate. The algorithm changes prices. But I think anywhere 90 to 110 that review, that three quarters thumbs up, is valid. Now, they were sold out there. I would like to think that the review had something to do with that. I have no real proof of that. But I noticed a third party seller on there had a few left and they had the price at $235. No, at $235, I do not give this thing a three quarters thumbs up. I don't think it is worth anywhere near that. But what I don't want to happen is that when we do a review and we like a product around here, that prices seem to magically rise on those products. But what should you do if you want one of the products and all the normal channels are sold out and the third party channels are kind of jacking up prices? What I would do, I hate to say it, is I would just wait. Wait for things to normalize, wait for a new shipment to come in and wait for prices to come back down. It's just not worth it and I don't want to see anybody around here getting screwed. I put up a poll asking people if they ever receive a product they've ordered online and it seems like the box has been opened. They sell these things as new. Sometimes you get something that looks like the box has been damaged. Has it been opened? Has someone else returned it? Is it truly new or not? And it looks like 54% of people say that never or only rarely happens to them. So that's kind of good. On the other hand, 42% of people receive products that look like they've been opened, not in new condition. I consider that pretty darn bad. Let's be on the lookout for that as well. Next up at Uncle Scott's Kitchen, little preview is a big review of this guy. This is a Cuisinart four quart stainless steel deep fryer. Does it produce delicious food? Is it as good as that TFL Easy Clean we like so much? Not gonna tell you, you'll have to watch the review to find out. Okay, down below or somewhere around this video, I've got hyperlinks to all the stuff we've talked about in the video today. Check out bakedeco.com when you get a chance. Make sure you use that discount code SCOTT10 at checkout. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again next time on Uncle Scott's Pancakes.